In the previous lecture, we discussed financial statement analysis, which is the end goal. So how do we get there? The first step in budgeting is to predict how much money we can generate through sales. This is sales forecasting. There are a few different forecasting methods. There's top-down, bottom-up, prior sales numbers, or similar businesses. In top-down, we're estimating the business's revenue by starting at the upper level of market size and working down into our business revenue. This is typically used when historical data doesn't exist, like with startups. The bottom-up approach estimates revenue based on the number of customers we think we can acquire within our marketing strategy and how much they're willing to pay. This is more credible than top-down. Prior sales numbers, we're basing our estimates on the business's historical sales numbers. This is an excellent starting point, but not available for new businesses or new offerings or new markets. We can also estimate sales based on similar businesses, where we're using the sales of those businesses in our area to project what our sales will be. This is difficult to get because businesses don't like sharing this information. Whichever method you use, it is a craft because it takes experience and predictive abilities to realistically envision the possibilities. I chose to demonstrate sales forecasting using a bottom-up example. Most likely, this is what you'll encounter when you are starting a business and conceptually, it is more straightforward. I've simplified this tremendously with the intent of modeling without complications. Through my market research and my desire or ability to sell coffee, I found there is an unmet need in this area. My target market is office workers looking to buy coffee and a snack on the way into the office and throughout the day to break up the daily monotony and meet with colleagues outside the office. So I set my hours according to their needs, which is Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I found that on average, they are willing to spend $7 on coffee and $5 on a baked good. Through observing a similar coffee shop in the area, I found an average of 60 customers per hour and 75% of them are buying a baked good. So here's my calculation. I'm assuming I can take 50% of those 60 customers. So I'm planning on 30 customers times the 12 hours will be open times 20 days of operations a month equals 7,200 cups of coffee sold, multiplied by $7, which equals $50,400 in monthly coffee revenue. Since I'm selling 7,200 cups of coffee, and I assumed 75% of my customers will buy a baked good, I multiply this by 75% and get 5,400 baked goods sold, multiplied by the $5 average price, equals $27,000 in monthly baked good revenues. Adding those two numbers up, I get total monthly sales of $77,400. Here I've taken that $77,400 and just dropped it in to my pro forma financial statement template. Notice I've split my two revenue streams into coffee and baked goods. That way you can manipulate a coffee sales without touching the baked goods sales and vice versa. Also notice that my sales forecast assumes that sales will be constant over 12 months and there will not be seasonality. This may not always be the case, so make sure you are developing your sales forecast with your specific business attributes in mind. This is where craft comes into play. I've provided my spreadsheets and templates for you to use. Look in our Canvas class right after this lecture 
and in the resource section. Here's what we've accomplished and where we're going. We've accomplished how much we're going to make in sales. Where we're still going is we need to estimate costs and complete the income statement. We need to do the cash flow statement and cash utilization rates to get to our end goal, which is comparing current actuals to budget to determine variances and strategizing. Till next time, happy forecasting.